Welcome to Haken, an Animal Crossing podcast, your podcast dedicated to all things Animal Crossing. Episode 102 is brought to you by Cathario, one of our newest Patreon patrons. Today, Sergio and I are going to answer a very nice letter from a listener, describe our perfect Halloween and autumn season, and go over our patrons' ideas for Halloween in New Horizons. So to begin, hello Sergio, how you doing? Hi, Bui. <laughs> I would like to be addressed <laughs> as Scargio for this episode, if you may. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you are Scargio, and I am Bui. <laughs> uh, I should have changed your name in the beginning. <laughs> Um, yes, so this is the last podcast episode of October, and thus the last podcast episode before Halloween, so it's of course going to be very spooky. Probably more heartfelt in the beginning, though, <laughs> <laughs> um, if I'm being honest, because like I said, we got this really nice letter. Well, I got it on Instagram from one of our listeners, and we'll get into that, but Sergio, it's been a little while since we caught up. We haven't talked too much since last week. What have you been up to lately? Honestly, in a way, it's kind of like like the fall season because I'm just throwing things away, you know, like the, the leaves keep falling and all things that don't <laughs> get used just need to go. So I, I've just been cleaning, cleansing, just sort of getting rid of things that I don't use anymore. That's awesome. When Jackie hears this part, she's going to be like, we need to do that. <laughs> um, no, but we've both kind of been feeling in that mood too, just kind of like decluttering a bit, getting things right. more organized, switching our wardrobe into our winter stuff because we have like a closet downstairs. We kind of have a downstairs basement area in our place. And uh, right now it's kind of summer stuff, kind of winter stuff. I don't know. We're in a weird in-between spot because <laughs> winter overall, it feels like it's coming early. It's already like snowed a couple times it hasn't really been like oh. really big snows but you can tell when you're outside it's really cold <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it, we're we're in that mood too just kind of the cleaning up mood so what kind of stuff are you getting rid of none of that kk stuff right oh no no <laughs> no no definitely <laughs> not if anything it's to make room for more kk stuff <laughs> yeah that's what i would think <laughs> yeah yeah and you know what's also nice of course it's gonna get darker earlier i don't know i love that i love darkness i don't know why but i do <laughs> <laughs> you know what me too a lot of people are really surprised when i tell them i just love an overcast rainy day um i i don't know i think rain is great yeah it's probably my favorite weather ever <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess also I had some idea with KK Slider stuff, but I think it was just that somebody showed us the shirt they got at Hot Topic that was an Animal Crossing shirt. And they mentioned there was a KK Slider one that mm -hmm. looked like a tour shirt. And I was like, oh, I got to get one of those. <laughs> um, it should only have one date on it, though. Um, and that should be that Nintendo Live concert where kk oh. slider played two songs you know yes that was amazing <laughs> yeah i'm really glad you looked into how people got went there <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah because anytime whenever japan decides to have a kk slider concert over here just let us know nintendo we want to go to that <laughs> <laughs> we will do whatever it takes <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so yeah, let's get into this. Uh, like I said, we got a letter from a listener. Their name is Micah, and I received this letter on Instagram, and they're actually a pretty young listener of the show. So they said to me, Hello, Chewy. My name is Micah, and I am 13 years old. I heard in your last podcast, episode 90, so not last podcast at this point, about 10 episodes ago, right? Mm -hmm. um, but they heard in that podcast, that uh, that you don't know any kids who play Animal Crossing. And I think a good idea for your podcast would, to, would be to have a kid on your podcast as a guest. I think I would be the perfect candidate because I have many ideas and thoughts on Animal Crossing, everyone's favorite game. <laughs> um, so I responded to them and I said, you know, I didn't really, we don't have really a process to have kind of more underage people on the show, you know. Um, because we do want uh, parents to be involved in everything. So in the sake of kind of saving time on that and not really having to figure all of that out, 
developed because I think it'd have to be a little bit, it'd take a little bit more work, you yes. know? <laughs> um, but I told him, you know, I still really want to hear your ideas. I want to know what the perspective is from a kid who plays Animal Crossing. Because, yeah, do you know any kids who play Animal Crossing, Sergio? Well, I know some of our listeners are around that age group and, you know, it depends if they consider themselves kids or still or not. But yeah, they, they still play and they love it and they have been playing for a while. Yeah, yeah. So we do have some listeners that fall into that more teen group, you know, mm -hmm. and I imagine they're in their teen ages because of Discord's policies and everything, um, since that's where we've talked to them. And you have to be at least 13 to be on the Discord. Um, mm -hmm. and, well, that platform itself, you know. Um, but yeah, so they sent me over some of their ideas and I wanted to share them with you slash talk about them with you, Sergio. So sure. Micah's first idea that, that he sent over, or she, I don't actually know, um, but they said, I think it would be really cool if you could mush up flowers that you grow into dye to change the primary color of clothing. For example, if you like the number one shirt, but don't like the red color, you can change it using the dye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think of this one? No, that, that's definitely amazing. Like, it's part of... It's sort of like taking the customization part of it, but just focusing on the color. And it makes a lot of sense because now, you know, with the new way that flowers are going to grow, this adds even more variety to the way we're going to be using flowers. I like the idea. Yeah, I really love this idea because there are shirts definitely in the game, especially like a lot of the striped shirts that yes. um, maybe they come in the one option. And I'm like, I really want to dye this shirt to be different colored stripes than the base color that it has, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then even like the plaid shirts and everything, a lot of them that are kind of like a basic kind of pattern, where whether it's like stripes, checkers, polka dots, you know? I think those are the ones that I've always felt like changing and customizing a bit more. Um, and I think I've almost done that before where I went to Able Sisters and I was like, all right, I'm just going to make this shirt, but it's going to be in green, you know? <laughs> um, but it, it basically, I just want to get the same shirt in a different color. <laughs> yes, um, and it would be nice if we can mix in the different flowers. So, you know, because we only have a, not that many colors, but if we can mix them up, definitely we, we would have a lot more. Yeah, and I feel like it also incentivizes um, breeding the hybrids too. Yes, um, because like like you're saying, like you start with reds, um, yellows, and whites for a lot of flower types, and mm -hmm. getting those blue colors is very difficult. But if you are able to, you can get a lot of blue clothing out of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I really love this idea. I think it gives a a lot more interactivity with um at least the world and it's you know i feel like this is something that really matches up with what animal crossing new horizons is going for with this new game where they're really focused on crafting everything and customizing your whole entire world you know mm -hmm. so having this type of feature this type of um i guess gameplay element really I, I think it just fits. It fits well with the world that they're creating for this game. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, so one of their other ideas was, how awesome would it be to have Brewster in a tiki hut serving drinks like juice? He would be so cute in an Alolan shirt. <laughs> and I like that they used <laughs> Alolan, little Pokemon reference there. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are really excited to see what Brewster ends up doing, let alone like kind of all of the special characters, you know? Yes. Because um, we, we've only seen really Tom Nook and then Timmy and Tommy. Outside of that, we have just gotten word from the developers that yes, Rossetti's in the game. Yes, Isabelle's in the game. Yes, K.K. Slider's in the game. What are they going to do? How are they going to appear? <laughs> we just don't know. But like, I think now is a good time to just come up with ideas with how 
these characters can come to this island that we're starting. And, you know, Brewster starting like a little tiki hut to serve juice. And um, I, I do want to add, Micah also said he will serve coffee as well. I'm, I wasn't implying that he wouldn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> so coffee will still be, of course, a staple of Brewster. It is brewing is in his name. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think I would like that setting for Brewster, kind of like a little, um, just a relaxing type of character on the beach <laughs> set up with a little shop to sell you some juice. Yes, I would like it too. I don't know if he would be down for that. I know he's like a hardcore, really passionate barista and he's all about coffee. So maybe in this game, he has to build up to that coffee shop, you know, by starting, like they said, with the Tiki Hut or, or selling juice or, or other drinks. And then eventually someone else, maybe a new special character, could take over the Tiki Hut and Brewster finally realizes his dream again of having a coffee shop. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I've we've talked about this before, and I really would like more characters to kind of work together at places. So mm -hmm. we have characters like Brewster, who's just at the coffee shop all day, every day. There's really nothing else that he does. He doesn't go home to sleep at all. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes me feel kind of bad for the characters. You know, it makes me feel like, Oh, they need a little break sometimes. So I do like the idea of maybe another special character coming in and working another shift. Maybe you can even like hire your little villagers around your town to get part time jobs and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, because we all, you know, the one thing that's unique about this game is we're all moving into this island together. It's not like an established town or anything yet. Like we're tasked to build it up from scratch. And all of your villagers start out in a tent just like you. And so it would make sense for them to, you know, pick up some jobs here and there just to pay off their homes and mm. that sort of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So long story short, I like that you have ideas for Brewster, Micah. <laughs> I think it's really, <laughs> it's really good to start thinking about what you want to see from your favorite characters, but also I know Nintendo is working hard on this game. They've been working on it for a very long time, I'm sure. And we gave them a little bit of extra time, but I'm sure it's all going to be worth it when it does come out. Yes. <laughs> um, so those were some of Micah's ideas, but Micah did um, message me recently with a question as well. So I thought it would be worth it to go ahead and answer this question. But they said, since Isabel won't be a mayor assistant anymore, what do you think her new job would be? What if she came and tried to be the mayor of the new island? Um, so, Sergio, tell us about what you think <laughs> about Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, for the record, I've, I've sort of calmed down about my, my thoughts on Isabel. I, I mean, I, I see what happened. You know, she was the mascot of New Leaf. And in a way, she's sort of no longer the mascot, at least not from what we have seen in New Horizons. So... Everything is cool. Isabel and I, we're buddies again. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, they haven't really shown what she's going to be doing in New Horizons. They did confirm that she's in it. Uh, um, well, she's in the game, and that's part of what I'm thinking. She might be optional. I think if you decide to run the town on your own, then you might not even see Isabel at all. You might hear from her. I was thinking, you know how when a new villager comes in, uh, in New Leaf and in the previous games, they just move in at some random spot uh, on their own, basically. I think in New Horizons, maybe that's Isabel's job. She picks sort of for you uh, a, a random place for the villager to move in. But if you want to, if you want to have control over that, basically you're doing Isabel's job. Um, so if you decide to leave it at random, basically it's not really random. It's Isabel helping you out. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I guess that would make sense. Like, I think characters need some sort of person in between when they're like, oh, yeah, I'm kind of looking for a place to live. Uh, can you help me out? I I get that. Um, I get that role for her, but I also feel like there might be somebody a little bit better suited for that. Because um, <laughs> I think Lottie will probably make her first... I technically second mainline game appearance, you know, she did show up a bit during uh, the Welcome Amiibo update in New Leaf, but she hasn't yes. really mm -hmm. been like 
integrated into a mainline game very well so far, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I feel like Lottie could do that role too, but Isabel, you know, she could do it. And I know, you know, we're we're still kind of floating in between that whole mayor, not mayor kind of world where yes. New Leaf added this very big new mechanic and kind of built the game around it. And then now it's gone. <laughs> and so it gives us a new... I guess it just makes it strange to look at the game in a way where this one big feature isn't going to be around anymore and there's going to be something different in its place, you know? Yes, and I think and I hope that Nintendo sort of knows that and they have something in mind to replace that feature as equally impactful and important as that was. Uh, One option could be which is rumored still, we don't know for sure, but if you're able to move either your tent or your house, you you pick your initial location, but maybe, hopefully, we can move it afterward. I think maybe Isabel could be part of that as well because, you know, she's good at uh, town layouts or town building in a way, so she might be the one responsible for helping you move your house or your tent. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, like, I'm going to backtrack a little bit saying, like, Lottie was a good role for it, but now thinking about, like, Happy Home Designer, for example, she was essentially the one who was commissioning work from the happy home team to like redesign the town and everything. So she kind of has that type of control already. Like she's been Mm. laying out, she's laid out a town before. Um, And we saw that in happy home designer. So yeah, Mm. I think for all of those types of things, she is a very good role for it. So I am, I'm going to backtrack a little bit on what (laughs) I said before and say, yeah, yeah, I think she'd be good there. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. Um, I also, I had something on my mind when I was talking earlier. I can't remember it quite right now, but uh, I don't know. I guess I had my own ideas for Isabel too. Um, so personally, I do hope that we have only really seen the beginning of this game. And from what we've heard in the presentations and stuff for New Horizons, the, I, I remember the narrator in the most recent um, I guess video that we got from the September direct and yes. she, she said something along the lines of and this is just the beginning of what you'll experience on the island and so I think that's Nintendo's way of telling us like they're really only showing us the beginning of the game Um, so we there's a lot that we don't know and there's a lot that we have yet to be told about it, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm assuming because we're very used to living in a town, te- well, moving into a town that already has all of these uh, amenities and stuff. And oh, man, I better say this before I forget, because I just remembered the other thing I wanted to say. Actually, it'll tie into this idea. But because we're moving into a town that kind of lacks all of that that we're used to moving into... I'm hoping that that means we're going to be able to grow into that, you know? Like maybe Mm -hmm. there aren't all of these shops. There isn't a museum. There isn't a town hall. But maybe if depending on how you play the game and how you work it, you eventually add those things, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. Because they've also told us like you can live in a tent forever. It'll change what's available to you and what maybe you upgrade one day and that changes what's available to you because you have different needs based on the structure that you live in and everything you know so what I'm thinking is like for me the town hall is kind of a staple of Animal Crossing there has not been a single Animal Crossing game without it um, Mm -hmm. at least the mainline titles you know (laughs) Um, the first game we had uh, I guess, did we have a town hall in the first game? N- hmm. Not really, actually. What we had was like the no. town plaza. And yes. I think mm-hmm. Tom Nook just kind of showed up. <laughs> I don't know where he <laughs> stayed. Was it in the post office? No, it wasn't there. So no. save for the first game, we didn't really have a town hall, but we did have a mayor kind of figure, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, from there, like Wild World and City Folk, those both had a town hall. Um, the town hall in New Leaf was incredibly important because that was where you did all of your mayor business from, which is, you know, the big main thing, the gameplay element that they added to um, Animal Crossing. 
So I think we're going to get to that point where we can grow a town and have a town hall eventually. And I honestly think Isabel's like the right choice for a mayor for that town, you know? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And maybe we get to vote <laughs> when that comes around. Maybe on the ballot, you'll see <laughs> Isabel, Tortimer, and let's just throw Rossetti in there because <laughs> Rossetti is trying to find <laughs> what he's oh, doing yeah. with his life, you know? Um, <laughs> so yeah, maybe there's that option. But regardless, I do think Isabel would be a great pick. I think she'd be my pick, even though I'd I'd be really sad to not have a tortoise or a turtle in my town. Please, Nintendo, add tortoises and turtles. Um, <laughs> but here's the other thing with this. I And uh, people are going to be very adverse to hearing this. They're not going to like this idea at all. And I know because I kind of don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but my idea is that maybe until you've built a town hall, you don't really have holidays. And it's because Isabel in New Leaf was such a huge role in the holidays, you know? Every single one, she was out there at the plaza. She had her setup where you could take your photo and everything. She had an item for every single guest. So she was very, like, event-oriented in that game. And so maybe until you unlock Town Hall... You just don't really get to celebrate that much because there's no governing body to really set, uh, organize a celebration. And then Mm -hmm. from there, I feel like it, it just incentivizes you to grow your island a bit. It gives you the town hall and unlocks holidays. And of course, I, I completely understand if people hate this idea because And like I said, I also don't like it because I think holidays are a real staple of that real-time clock element to Animal Crossing. Yes. And so going even a month without them would be very hard. (laughs) (laughs) So what do you think of that? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I see... I see what you're saying. It's possible and it would encourage you to, you know, keep playing, to grow your island, to have Isabel as part of your island. But... I don't know. I think it's a little, like you said, it's a little challenging. It's possible, but I think maybe there's a a better way to integrate her. It would be very interesting, though. Like, it would be, it would definitely shake the foundations of Animal Crossing. And, you know, maybe some people want that. Yeah, yeah, it would be very different. And then I also, kind of like low-key in the background, in the back of my mind, I guess, I do get the feeling that it captures a bit of that first game that came out on the N64. Because the first Animal Crossing game that was Japan exclusive at that time, and, you know, for a little bit, they didn't even know if they were going to um, bring the game outside of Japan. But Mm -hmm. for a little bit, like that first game, it didn't really have any holidays it didn't have a lot of the stuff that is like very normal for animal crossing to have now (laughs) so like moving into kind of a rundown island i guess it's not too rundown more deserted like they say but moving into a deserted island it will i feel like that'll kind of capture that first game's kind of emptiness the charm behind just having essentially the land around you to work with and have fun in you know Yes, definitely. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's essentially the idea I came up with for introducing her. I know it's for sure extreme. I personally, I'd probably just opt to keep it normal. Give me my holidays. You know, I need those. But at the same time, (laughs) I'm like, yeah, it's coming out in March. I'd probably have a town hall by October, which is very important to me. (laughs) Um, Because that's when you get into um, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Toy Day, all of the great staples of autumn and winter in Animal yes. Crossing. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd rather have the holidays, but I shouldn't be kind of accepting of a system like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, it, I say it with some hesitation, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it is exciting to to imagine what Nintendo is thinking, what they're going to be doing with the special characters, because like you said, we don't know what they're doing. And in a way, it feels like Nintendo is keeping that secret for a reason. So it's kind of exciting to consider these scenarios, and then eventually we're going to find out really what's going on. So it's all fun. 
Yeah, yeah, it's very exciting to see. I, I'm just getting real excited for whenever we see the next footage for this game. Um, rumors are starting to pop out about it. I guess I didn't really decide to talk about it too much, so I'll just mention it. Um, I don't really believe them so far. Um, hmm. From what people are saying, they're saying, uh, I want to say November 17th or something was the date that they were guessing was going to be. Actually, I think it was November 13th, um, which is like a Wednesday Mm. in November. But that's when people are starting to guess that there will be a uh, um, a Nintendo Direct. And so people are wondering if we're going to see some more Animal Crossing footage, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. But what do you... Sergio, you've gone on the record and said (laughs) that you believe there will be a Nintendo Direct early December. How are you feeling these days about that? Yes, December 4, 9 a.m. Pacific. (laughs) (laughs) Well, as you can tell, I'm still pretty stoked about it. I'm looking forward to it. I know it's going to happen that day and that date. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that sounds great. Um, Yeah, me, I guess I'm still leaning on the side of... I don't see myself... uh, I don't see us seeing it again till next year. Um, So 2020... But at the same time, I think they're really going to make 2020 the year of Animal Crossing. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be all about the game. And I'm, uh, one of my biggest hopes for it is that they are planning on kind of updating the game pretty regularly over the next year. You know, um, mm-hmm. Splatoon, I think, does has done a really good job yes. with like always keeping the game fresh every month and giving us some sort of update, at least up until up- updates ended this past summer. <laughs> um, but yeah, like mm-hmm. I, I want them to kind of go that route. I want them to think of this game as more of a long lasting franchise and one that they want people to keep being invested in regularly, you know? And so one of the challenges with Animal Crossing is definitely that real-time clock where essentially you're waiting for new stuff by the end of the month and you're really excited to see what is going to happen, you know? Um, yes. But once you do, you're just like, wow, that it's really cool. But to add like a little bit more incentive on top of that and give us extra bonus things throughout the year, throughout each month, I think that's really going to take it to the next level. Yeah, and you know what? That's a good point because other than Smash Brothers, which, you know, it makes sense for it to be advertised pretty much on every direct and to have its own specific directs, I feel like another game that did that very well was Splatoon 2, like you mentioned. They kept it so up to date that they kind of had to include it on pretty much a lot of their directs and it even had some of its own special announcements whenever they had like the Octo expansion or when they had a special themed Splatfests, they would they would advertise it, they would market it. And I feel like if we do have the year of Animal Crossing, they would probably do the same thing. It would be mentioned at least a little bit on every direct or every here and there whenever we get um, a cool update to a game that it does, uh, you know, set itself well for constant updates. Yeah, and it does seem like Smash just keeps showing up every direct too. <laughs> so it feels like something that they are um pretty good with. At least when they have something that's being updated regularly, they mention it. Like Splatoon, it got mentioned whenever they had something new coming up and there was a direct uh, around mm-hmm. that time. Um so yeah, I I like that. I think I would love to just like have constant Animal Crossing stuff to talk about (laughs) Uh, because, you know, we go through long periods of time with nothing and we're getting into one of those right now. I mean, we just, last time we heard about the game was about a month ago, a month and a half ago now. Um, So we're, we're waiting, we're sitting around waiting (laughs) and that's all we've really been able to do for a very long time. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. (laughs) So I'm ready to be done with that. I'm ready to just have the game in front of me so I can play it between any time news breaks. So then when they finally get to that news, I'm just like, yes, this is perfect. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, I do want to thank Micah for reaching out. Um, And for any other um, young people who listen to the show, like I said, I don't. 
I still don't know too many kids who play the game, but it's always nice if you send us like an email, catch us on Instagram, Twitter, wherever you are allowed to be, of course, with parental supervision. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Feel free to send us your ideas. I really and tell us what you think about Animal Crossing, being a kid who plays the game, um, because. You know, I I really want to be able to get enough perspectives of the game here on the show. Um, I know at the beginning, I really wanted more female voices on this show because the the female demographic is a huge part of Animal Crossing. That is yes. a lot of the players. They practically define it, you know? Um, so I, I, for me, it's very important that voices are heard and people's thoughts and ideas about the game are out there too, so... I do want to thank you for that, Micah, and I hope you enjoyed this because uh, you sent this a while ago and I was really sad I, I hadn't worked it into the show yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Sergio, let's go ahead and move on to this next topic and we're going to go ahead and describe our perfect Halloween and autumn season. Um, so... I really love autumn. I love when the weather starts to cool down. All the fun holidays start happening this time of year. And I start thinking about Animal Crossing during this time of year more (laughs) than any other time. Um, I mean, I'm always thinking about it at this point. We talk about it every single week. (laughs) (laughs) But it just feels different during this time of year. It just feels like something very special, something very cool, because a little background on me, I started playing Animal Crossing around this time of year. It was probably like oh, October-ish okay. time when I first picked up the game. So everything from this point forward is just like the deepest nostalgia for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is really where it hits hard. So Sergio, let's go ahead and create some of our perfect Halloween and autumn seasons that bring up some ideas. I'll let you start uh, with this. Sure. So what I had in mind, it's a little crazy right from the get-go. I kind of want a couple of scares in the game. <laughs> uh, you know, even even some slight jump scares. I know those are not very popular. I kind of like them. But they don't have to be too, you know, scary. They can be slight, slight jump scares. <laughs> uh so some ideas that I had, for example, you could be playing in your game and then you get a letter and you think it's a normal letter, like any other letter, just saying something nice to you. But it's actually one of your favorite villagers telling you that they have moved. Oh, no. <laughs> and I mean, we've been through this. Uh, we definitely have and we probably still will. But it turns out they were just kidding. <laughs> if you walk to their house, they're, they're still there and they, they got you good. <laughs> oh man, that would be <laughs> the ultimate prank on everybody. <laughs> because like we we've all gone through that experience where your villager just moves. Like they didn't warn you, they didn't tell you anything. They just disappeared one day and then all of a sudden you're just sad. <laughs> it's just not the same town without <laughs> them, you know? Yes. Oh man, that would scare so many people. They would be upset. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, yep, definitely. So I was also thinking when you buy an item, whatever it is, let's say it's, you know, 500 bells and you say, yes, I I agree to pay. Um, Either Tom Nook or whoever is selling you the item, they could say something like, oh, actually, I messed up the price is 50,000 bells. Thank you. I'll take your cash. And you you see your bells dropping and you think they, (laughs) they are actually serious. But but then again, that's another prank. They were just kidding. It is 500. You're, you're good to go. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that makes me think of, funny enough, the Digimon movie. Because <laughs> I think there's like, oh. there's a power outage in that movie. And somebody's at the register buying some chocolate. And the price for it rings up as something ridiculous just because of the time <laughs> that it happened. And then they're, the cashier's just like, wow, that must be really good chocolate. um so yeah no i think that would be really funny just like everybody in the town's out there to fool you and make you think (laughs) that the worst has happened (laughs) yeah (laughs) yep like even your turnips you know the game could tell you that your turn your turnips went bad even though it's not sunday yet but No, they were just kidding. Or they could also do the same thing with the turnip prices. (laughs) Yeah, maybe they'll (laughs) um, make them drop out of nowhere. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no, I really, I like that just because like, I don't know, it's fun to get a little tricked every once in a while and then find out that, oh, okay, 
it's all right. Nothing bad has actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it goes well, you know, with um, the mood of Halloween. But as far as actual themes, uh, definitely more spooky looking or twilight looking skies, like more darkish, like dark orange, dark purple type of environments. Um, you know, they, they would still make sense on the island. It, it still has to look like the natural forest type of approach that we love about Animal Crossing. But I think they can change the colors a little bit, especially in October. Um, I was also thinking, I think you're going to like this one. What if instead of getting chased by bees every now and then you actually get chased by bats? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, as long as they also add bad villagers to them. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, I really like that idea of just like kind of changing up a little bit um, because I'm thinking now of um, a Pocket Camp and all of the things that they do with Pocket Camp. And, you know, they have different terrains to make your camp all spooky, for example. And yes. that one comes with like a very different sky and everything. And I think they have the opportunity to do that with this Animal Crossing, like kind of go with something maybe not so... Um, I don't know. I guess I'd want to say like not so natural, but I think you could get some pretty spooky skies that still have a natural feel to them and everything. So yeah, yeah, I really like the idea of like maybe Halloween night. The skies are all crazy, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was even thinking it could be like a gradual thing. You know, the further you get into October, the more dark, the more dark orange or twilight the skies get, the more bats you get chased by the more pranks the the villagers run on you so it's like a gradual thing and then after halloween it start it, it also starts to fade away but gradually it's not like it's november 1st okay it's thanksgiving celebration no no it, it, like i feel like a gradual um build up and roll off would be nice for these holidays yeah, and I think that works in, too, with, like, kind of how the seasons change. Um, because we do have, like, um, you know, summer, fall, winter, spring, all of those seasons. But, you know, there are gradual changes throughout those seasons as well. It's not like it just skips through those four. There's, like, a good eight or so other times yes. where things change. I, I don't know the number exactly, but there are a bunch of different grass colors and, you know, like kind of implementing that on the sky as well and giving you different sky colors throughout the year. That is cool. <laughs> Especially because <laughs> yes. like just looking at the time lapse portions of this game and seeing how they their lighting is just so much better and all of the colors and stuff that they're able to achieve and the glow of the tent and everything. I think it just gives you like a much cooler way to look at the world, you know? Yes, yes, definitely. One one last idea. I don't know. Do, do the villagers mention daylight savings? <laughs> Would that be <laughs> kind of cool if they mentioned the, the fallback aspect of it? I want to say they do, but I'm not, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that's always a weird point in Animal Crossing where it lets you change the clock. Like you, I mean, yes. <laughs> you don't always have to, but at points like you do change the clock and you're kind of wondering like, what's going to happen? I'm going back an hour and yes. usually I'm not allowed to time travel. Are things yeah. going to be weird now? <laughs> so, right. yeah, I think it's a, it's a cool thing that they have going on for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I guess I'll go over my ideas. And I guess the main one kind of stems off of just like the autumn season. It's not too Halloween-ish, but maybe it would work around then too. But this is more just general autumn. But I just wanted <laughs> to picture this. There are leaves everywhere. <laughs> and we kind of have seen this in this but uh, in um clips that we've gotten where leaves are floating through the air in Animal oh, yes. Crossing. So, where well, they're already they're on their way. <laughs> and I feel it already, but <laughs> there's leaves everywhere. They're falling off of the trees. You can see them floating in the wind. And then you're just strolling around and listening to the rustle of those leaves and feeling that crisp autumn air. Of course, you wouldn't be able to feel it, but I'm putting that into your head <laughs> that you can feel this air and kind of feel it all, uh, you know, just blown past your, 
your face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and then you're just like wearing a little jacket. Maybe you put on a hat because your ears mm. are chilly, but you definitely <laughs> have some boots on. And yeah, you just got to have some boots on. <laughs> but you're just strolling around, enjoying the crunch of the leaves, watching them float around, mm. hit the ground and then go and step on them. But that to me is like, I want to do that in Animal Crossing. I want to do that just all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like, you know, being from California originally, there was a lot less kind of autumn feeling days. Like there's an autumn feel to California if you live there for a while. But overall, it's not like autumn there, you know, not no. like other people know it. Yes, <laughs> right. So I don't know. I think capturing that for some places that don't have much of an autumn. Uh, this is maybe a better example. I lived in Arizona for a bit and it was definitely not an autumn there. <laughs> um, it's very deserted. So it's yeah. not the same look and feel at all. But having that in Animal Crossing, I think would be a big deal for a lot of people. Yeah, I think that's a good thing that Animal Crossing does that, you know, it goes with the seasons. It goes a little bit on the extreme side of them, but that's okay because they are so buried the way they are. And like you said, not everyone gets the full extreme of these seasons, but we can get it in Animal Crossing. I think that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's something really awesome. Yeah. And then outside of that, I did come up with some different things that I would like. I want pumpkins. I want <laughs> to turn them into like jack-o'-lanterns and pl put them all over my town because that would be really yeah. perfect for that season. Um, and I know a lot of people are like kind of against farming and everything, but just like the aesthetics of being able to farm are make it worth it enough for me. Like being able to plant pumpkins and grow them and have them show up around my town that alone makes farming with it for me. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, and then outside of that, like you, I'm really excited about being the, able to place items everywhere because you can put like cauldrons in places and skeletons and, you know, just overall decorate your town yes. so it has a very cohesive Halloween type of feel, you know? Yes, and hopefully we... You know, it's it looks like we're going to be able to place anything anywhere. And... If we have a lot of items and by the time, you know, if we start in March, I think by October, we probably have a good inventory. We can really make something very special. Yeah, it would be really awesome. And then um, I, I, I also had that I'd love to hang things from trees. Oh, yeah. And this would even go beyond like Halloween uh, because like one of my next door neighbors has a bunch of uh, like witch hats hanging from their tree. And I'm like, that's really cool decoration for your place during <laughs> Halloween. Um, but yeah, even beyond that, like being able to put up like Christmas lights and stuff, I think a lot of people would want that. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of like toy day lights and, you know, just celebrate the holidays a little bit more. Yes, definitely. And then also, I don't like to skip over Thanksgiving because that's my favorite holiday. So I'd have a bunch <laughs> of harvest items, like baskets of fruit and veggies and corn stalks all over the place. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, I would love to make little farm feeling um, harvesty types oh, of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so those are the ideas I've had for it. Yeah, but very um, nice and... I mean, at at this point, it's just a matter of time to see how many of these we get in the game. But like I said, it, it's just fun to speculate and to imagine these things. And I bet you we're going to get a lot more than what we think. Yeah. And I really hope we do just because um, I feel like we've only seen the beginning of this game, yes. like I said. And I think there needs to be a lot more stuff that we can enjoy. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Sergio, let's go ahead and move into our final segment, and that is our Haken's Islander Corner. And for those of you who don't know, every week on Patreon, we ask our patrons a question and then read our answer, read their answers here on the show. This week's question was, how would you make New Horizons spookier for Halloween? And I, I don't know how many of these are very spooky, but everybody did come up with some really awesome ideas. Yes. And Sergio, let's go back and forth on these. Do you want to start? Sure. Our first answer this week is by Emily with two E's. And they said, 
I would bring back Wisp's original purpose. On Halloween night, he would recruit you to catch spirits for his boss. Except it wouldn't just be five spirits, you would get a Wisp furniture item for every five spirits you bring to him. I think that would be a cool El no Nostalgic addition. I definitely <laughs> agree with this. I don't remember doing this in the original game, so just having Wisp back was pretty awesome in, in the New Leaf update, but bringing his original feature and expanding on it and making it part of Halloween, that would be amazing. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people didn't start at that first game either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they don't really know like how that all went. Personally, like I played the game and I didn't even know <laughs> how it all went. It was just like something that I managed to miss somehow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Over my time playing it. But yeah, just like... I, I, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but like just having like callbacks to those original games and seeing how that all plays out, I think is really exciting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Dogbert said, I'd want villagers to wear Halloween costumes more than just the pumpkin masks. I'd want them to be skeletons, ghosts or mummies. It would be adorable. <laughs> and I agree with this because we got like a whole slew of cool new Halloween costumes in New Leaf. Like they added the wolf hat and everything and they have the mummy costume. They have uh, Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> like there are just so many cool things that they couldn't really have the villagers wear because they weren't designed to wear them. Um, yes. I think it wasn't till uh, Happy Home Designer where we got to put hats on villagers, for example. Um Essentially, if they didn't have a hat they uh, built into their design, they could just never wear one in the new game. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's really cool um, that they added. And so I'm hoping that we get a lot more freedom behind what the villagers can wear. We've already seen them have sleeves on their clothing, which was a big thing that all clothes has most of it has <laughs> yeah but they always just wore tank tops <laughs> yeah 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 so yeah we're definitely seeing changes and this this will be a really cool one for sure uh honey o honey oceans also says hollow the spooky trees for the night bats in the air and most importantly in my opinion a new spooky soundtrack and sound effects like owl hoots and such maybe an indigo sunset too to set the mood yes i definitely i like this all of this i love it but the, the <laughs> spooky soundtrack is my favorite part of it <laughs> Yeah, I do really love the idea of having new sounds kind of integrated into the world. And you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, uh, this wouldn't be new to Animal Crossing. Uh, Happy Home Designer actually gave us like soundscapes that we could add to our designs. Like you could oh. choose to add the murmur of a crowd in a store. You could choose to add like little wind sounds and that sort of thing. So there were kind of sound options in that game and so it i think now's the time to work it in we did hear during the treehouse that the foley artists worked pretty hard on yeah. um on creating the sounds of new leaf and so or not new leaf new horizons so mm -hmm. i feel like it's time to start taking advantage of the possibilities with the switch and having you know a little bit more room with the with the memory and the, I guess, size of the files to make those things more in depth, you know? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, uh, sorry, I forgot who we were on. Lake Mount, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So Lake Mount said, I don't think this would make New Horizon spookier, but trick-or-treating could be a fun addition. On Halloween night, villagers from other islands come visit the island and stop by all the homes. For each house you visit, you get a candy. And, if you're lucky, a cool spooky piece of furniture. <laughs> and I really like that because it would, like, kind of build a world around your island where you know there are some that exist outside of that and maybe they visit every mm. once in a while. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I don't know. I think it's really cool to have that type of idea play out and give more trick-or-treating options. Yes, trick-or-treating trick by itself would be great, but definitely including it as part of multiplayer, yes, that is definitely really, really cool idea. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Ella Walker also says, I would love to be able to decorate the trees, cedar trees particularly, with spooky string lights if it was possible. It would also be cute if villagers had jack-o'-lanterns outside their homes that lit up the Halloween night while trick-or-treating. Yes, uh, <laughs> this is just bringing together a lot of the ideas that we talked about, but I mean, it, it's all spooky and it, it goes with with October and with Halloween for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think putting up lights is a huge thing. That would be really fun. Um, yes. And I mentioned earlier, like, I want to be able to put things on trees. I want them. And I was remembering in a past episode where I said I want to be able to, like, put things on the walls of the cliff, for example. Because um, I feel <laughs> yeah. like that just gives you so much more that you can do. And maybe you can hang things on, like, the tree trunks at least. But I don't know. I think we oh. need to have some way to decorate the trees in our town because there's so many of them. And they go mostly unused yes that's right yeah so emily rose garvey said hello i think it'd be super cool if pumpkins grew or if you could plant pumpkins then we could pick them and carve a face on them oh and it'd be cool if there was a pumpkin carving competition too <laughs> yes i didn't even know this was an answer <laughs> before i said my pumpkin <laughs> stuff but pumpkin carving competition i'm all in on that <laughs> yes yes definitely yeah, but yeah, overall, like, I think just like the aesthetics uh, to gardening and being able to plant and grow things, that alone should be reason enough to essentially go out <laughs> and add farming to Animal Crossing. <laughs> Um, yeah, so even if it's just for the pumpkins, right? <laughs> yeah, just for the pumpkins. Just give yeah. us pumpkins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need them in my town. Yeah, yeah, just in October, just pumpkins, but it's perfect. <laughs> nice and our last answer for this week is by dragon and he says i would like to grow a giant oversized pumpkin and make it a jack-o-lantern i'd also like to decorate with uh, cobwebs and maybe a fake spider and hang them all over the bushes maybe have some kind of spotlight effect in the darkness using some lighting item or some spooky figure out in the distance and have kk dirge playing outside at all times <laughs> <laughs> i really like the the lighting idea you know that's sort of like the the uh, scary stories gather around activity to do like in in halloween or so yeah ah if they can work that out like that would be a good backdrop for like the the cliffs that you were mentioning. Just yeah. have the light spot on them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like casting huge creepy shadows. That's an effective, <laughs> scary thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing I want to mention here is like playing KK Dirge outside. Like I'm also remembering now that we're going to be able to put like musical items oh, outside. Yeah. Like we can choose the soundtracks to the... I guess the worlds we build now. So yeah. we're going to see a lot of creativity from people and they're going to tie it all together with classic KK slider tunes that were going <laughs> to be perfect for this world. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I am so excited now. I, it's going to, it's a long wait, Sergio. I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm starting to like, look every single day again how many days are we away from this I, i've been pretty good at doing it just weekly on my fridays you know yes but past couple weeks i've just been checking a lot more frequently i checked this morning <laughs> already <laughs> nice um, so yeah it's it's feeling like a long wait and luckily like we know this is the last halloween that we'll play well, that i guess that we'll have without being able to play this game Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, every game from here on out, we get to enjoy Halloween. And it's funny because like, I, I always feel these things between uh, other Animal Crossing games. And then I don't, I don't know, sometimes I'm just like, oh, I don't feel like going back to that one. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it's because I'm like really distracted by the thought of a new game. Um, because I, I felt distracted at points for the, uh, for that same reason. Like, yeah. last E3, maybe not so much last E3, but the E3 before that, like, going up to um, E3 2018, I was just so confident that Animal Crossing was going to get shown off then. And then it didn't happen. And I would had been, like, slowly losing steam on Pocket Camp. I was less and less interested right, and more... Right ready to throw that game away <laughs> um, <laughs> and move on to bigger and better things. But now I'm 
I, I feel that kind of with the older games. I mean, they're all still great, but I'm like, I don't really want to play that one again. I I want I want the new one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it it's within Rasp basically, less than half a year, just a few more months. Yeah, it's true. So we're in October. We're about to hit November actually. So November. November, December, January, February. Last yes. four months without this game. And then March, <laughs> we're going to get it. Like, that's when yeah. it comes out and yeah. we're done. So, yeah, the, <laughs> this wait is getting close to over. Four months without the game now, that's just a, a third of the year. <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. Which is a lot less than half the year. Which yeah. is a lot less <laughs> than a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... It's about to happen. I'm excited. Um, anything else you wanted to mention before we end the show, Sergio? No, I guess you, you sort of mentioned it that, you know, this is going to be a cool Halloween as always. Uh, fall season going into winter. It's always pretty cool for, for a lot of us. But just thinking that next year we're going to have New Horizons and it's going to be a very different experience. It's just exciting. So we're looking forward to March, but we're also looking forward to time in life with New Horizons because everything is going to change. Yeah, yeah. It's all going to be different, and we're all going to live (laughs) in a new world. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Haken, an Animal Crossing podcast. Don't want the episode to end? Well, you can keep the conversation going by Nintendo switching over to our Discord. Just follow the link in the description, and you can talk with other people who love Animal Crossing as much as you do, including Sergio and me. Want to support the show in a bigger way and get your voice heard during the show? Visit patreon.com slash Nintendo. You can support our show with just $1, have an episode dedicated to you, get special access to a secret room on Discord, join in on the Haken Islander Corner, and even read a monthly newsletter covering all things Haken and Chewy Plays. I have a new one coming out soon, and I think it's going to be really fun for everybody. But we really appreciate the support you put toward uh, the show, and it really goes towards great things. Tuned in on YouTube? The comments are a great place to let us know your answers to the Haken Islander Corner. What would you do to make Halloween and Animal Crossing spookier? If you dig what you hear, please KK slide over to that review section on your platform of choice. Let people know what they're missing out on. Haken is a wild production brought to you by Chewy, Sergio, and all of our patrons. We thank you for listening, and we hope you have a great week. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>